Hello guys and gals, me Mudahara. I think I'm gonna make some swainy boys and girls a little bit mad, ladies and gentlemen. Now, I like video gaming, as you know, I play on the PlayStation, the Xbox, the Switch, the PC, the Mac. Alright, shit, I might even whip out a... I might even bring up an Apple Watch and sometimes game on that too, if you could. But ladies and gentlemen, when it comes to video gaming, I have no allegiances. I just play good stuff, okay? Now, Spider-Man 2 is a game that's been breaking the records, 90 plus on Metacritic, and it is kind of, I would say, deserving of it. It's a pretty good game, and the reason I'm talking about it is I just finished it. This is Spider-Man 2. I got it a little like a day or two early. Uh, I have about 26, 27 hours in the game. I kind of, I kind of no lifed this straight up, to be honest with you. Finished it about two hours ago, and really had time to sort of script out and collect and write out my thoughts. It is not a perfect game. This game is, honestly, now the more I think about it, it's a little mid. And it's a mid because it is by far one of the safest sequels that I've ever seen to a video game. Now, to understand, I love Spider-Man PS4. I love Spider-Man Miles Morales. I think those are some of the best PlayStation games out there. When Spider-Man dropped on the PS4 at the tail end of its lifespan, I was like, this is a good game. This game looks nice. This is amazing. You know, it was a game that really made you feel like Spider-Man. And honestly, I know that I sound like IGN when I say it, but there's no better way to put it, okay? Spider-Man is about swinging through New York, about beating the crap out of, like, criminals, and, uh, you know, doing some good old Spidey stuff from time to time. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this game is pretty much that. And I want to start off by saying, I'm going to obviously cut this into, like, you know, uh, pillars of reviews that I would call it. So let's start off with things like the graphics, which I think a lot of people think about when they load up a game. Obviously, it's the first thing you see, and it's what all the console warriors are fighting about. Uh, Starfield has one galaxy. Spider-Man has one city. Yeah, the city in the city of New York in Spider-Man 2 is astronomically larger than, I would say, a lot of these infinite open-world experiences. It's a very well-crafted experience. It looks very nice. The amount of detail on display is golden. And with the PlayStation 5, there's two options. You can use Fidelity, which is 30 frames, but all the graphic settings are maxed out, not just like visually, but things like the amount of people in the crowd, the vehicles on the road. Everything is cranked up to 11. Then you've got performance mode, which is 60 frames, uh, but obviously some settings and the world detail is paired back. I played the entire game at 30 frames per second, 40 frames when connected to a 120 hertz monitor, and so far, never lost a frame, period, as far as my experience went. It was a very smooth ride all the way through. You might be like, but Muda, why didn't you play it at 60? It's an action game. That's because the 30 frames is actually paced and timed so well that I really didn't feel that level of sluggishness. The game has like 10 out of 10 quality put into it, at least in its visuals. The ray tracing on display is some of the best ray tracing I've seen in gaming period. Of course, when you're zipping through New York and flying through the reflective walls and the nice like interiors and everything, you want to see accurate, proper reflections. And this game has reflections within reflections, which is insane for me to think about. The water has ray tracing reflections on top of it. So what this basically means is everything feels more realistic, but also you start to see less of the illusion breaking around you. Before ray tracing, we had things like screen space reflections, which if you knew what you were looking for, or you occluded sort of like the field from its reflection, then you would basically start to see the cracks in the matrix. With ray tracing, every reflection is there no matter what, okay? Even if you're not looking at the item that the uh, screen space is supposed to be reflecting, it will be reflected because of the ray tracing attached to it. Obviously, with Fidelity, everything is maxed out. It looks gorgeous. You can see ray tracing even into, like, distant windows. With performance, a lot of cutbacks have to happen. But I think in general playthroughs, most people, when they're playing a game that's all about fast action, won't really notice it. But in reality, what really strikes me about the graphics in this game is how lively New York feels. I don't think that Insomniac was like, you know, thanked enough for how true to life they made New York feel, even with the PS4 version of Spider-Man, Miles Morales. But now that they've got the PS5 and like updated CPUs, they have went out of their way to make the traffic density feel like actual New York. Now when you stop and you look down, it really feels like the original PS2 game where you were literally just watching a video of like fast traffic on the ground. Here you can see 
the amount of vehicles in New York, and it feels like New York. There's traffic jams everywhere. Like, being Spider-Man is like a fucking gift from the heavens because you can just skip the entire, like, uh, traffic problems in New York. The amount of people that you see walk around Times Square is great. It, the hustle and bustle of New York is alive and well. There were moments where, like, I had, like, my mom come over a day ago and she looked at the game. She was like, damn, is this like a movie? And I'm like, no, ma, it's a video game. Now, of course, that's just the graphics. Obviously, the music is pretty top tier too, uh, which is no shock. I think the general like visual and audio performance of this game is great. Uh, the acting is like superb. I think that no matter what, anybody that wants to claim it, the game looks well and it looks like a very, very, very premium product. Now, that said, visuals, Music is just one term of the gameplay. It's just one tier of a video game. Obviously, the gameplay and what you're doing for 20, 25 hours, which is about how long this game necessarily is, matters the most, right? Like, if the gameplay isn't fun, the game could look like Crisis fucking 1. But that doesn't necessarily make it something that I would go out and recommend you buy. Which is where a lot of my complaints from Spider-Man 2 have come out. Now, the storyline is paced really well. I think uh, every single uh, story piece that you go through, it never felt like the game was overstaying its welcome. I've played tons of other games in the past, even my favorite superhero games, the Arkham series. You know, I love Arkham Knight, but there are moments in that game where I'm like, all right, can we hurry shit up? Because the credit screen should have happened maybe like two, three hours ago. There is no point in this game's pacing where I felt like, it's dragging on, it's dragging on, all the acting, everything is superb, the story beats hit, it literally goes from point to point to point. Even in those moments in the video game where like Peter and Miles, because you play as two Spider-Man, are like, maybe I should see what's happening around New York, the game will instantly call you right after that dialogue and say, yeah, here's the next story mission. Dog, if you want to commence, feel free to go. So I'm glad that the game gives you that option. It's all there. And if you didn't want to do any of the side content, the storyline, if you basically beeline it all the way through, I think should take you no more than like 10, 11 hours. And I'm not even being like cute when I say that. It is literally that short. But to an extent, even the original Spider-Man on the PS4 is short. Hell, even other superhero games like the Arkham series are that short. Because if you're not doing side content in a superhero video game, you're kind of playing it wrong. And Spider-Man 2 has got a fair amount of side content. You've got, you know, aside from your collectathons, your landmark photos to take, there are a few side villains and side stories you actually go through, which have their own cutscenes, own superheroes, own arcs, that I think kind of add more quality than what you see in the original PS4 release as well. But this is where the cracks start to show up, and I'm gonna get real upfront and brutally honest with you. I think this game's progression, I think this, game suit mechanics, I think this game stealth is a direct pair back from the original. So to start off with the suits in this game, which there are a lot of, all right, because when you factor in how many suits you get between Peter and Miles, I think there's a little bit more than the original game ever had. But that said, those games were also filled with just one protagonist each. If you factored in Miles Morales, Spider-Man is like separate games with their own separate protagonists. I'm pretty sure they have more cosmetic options there. But the suit unlocks in the original games, PS4 and Miles Morales, PS4, PS5, those games had suit powers, which like every suit had its own sort of power attached to it. And it basically correlated with the design of the suit, the history of the suit, the lore of the suit too. Here, the suits are honestly just cosmetics. There are further unlocks where you can unlock different variants of the cosmetics. So it's the same suit, but with like different color styles, but there is no suit power attached to it. So a lot of the actual reason that I had to unlock every suit is gone because aside from like two or three different cosmetics that I enjoy, if it's no, if there's no gameplay functionality you're unlocking, what's the point, right? Even if the gameplay functionality was like, you replenish items faster, you have an ultimate attack, or there was one in the original game where you could just quip more, the fact that you had extra gameplay features felt like you were getting more than just unlocking a cosmetic. I actually really don't even feel like I have a reason to complete some of the side quests to unlock exclusive suits because there's no gameplay attachment to them. Leveling up in this game is also kind of pared back because in the original game, you level up, you get XP, 
you level up, you get more health, you get more damage, you get faster traversal speed. In this game, all you get are skill points, which can be used to basically amp up some of your, like, um, I guess, ultimate attacks, if you will. Uh, there are uh, upgrades to your health, your damage, your traversal, but that's all related to the suit powers where you like, or suit tech, where you build or grind that out. And, and that's pretty much what it comes down to. The other big pairback is the gadgets. This time there are literally only five gadgets if you include your web shooters as well. Whereas in the original game you had trick mines, spider drones, uh, you know, gravity complex, you had a bunch of cool things. And I know people that never fucked with that, but I would always unlock almost every single like possible gadget and basically use that. I would literally have like nine gadgets on play while I was fighting a Spider-Man. And that was on like the harder difficulty for the Spider-Man PS4. You don't really get that. You get four gadgets and yeah, some of them are good, but really it just comes down to spamming uh, all of them when you have them replenished and just using them to like cut down on the hordes of enemies that are fighting. The combat is pretty good. It's there. It's very serviceable. It's fast paced. Uh, there's not a whole lot of enemy variety. Uh, usually it's like standard enemy. Oh, enemy with a shield, hit circle, slide under them, knock them into the air, beat the shit out of them. Oh, brute, just parry every once in a while when you see like the big red uh, parry uh, indicators and just continue to wail on them. There's not a whole lot of diversity. The combat is flashy and fun to look at, but I feel like with the amount that they paired back with the gadgets, it's just losing more than you're ever actually gaining. But I think the biggest sin for me in this game is the stealth mechanics. So in the original game, the stealth was really fun. Like the stealth was built upon. It wasn't like as complex as like, you know, Batman or Metal Gear or Splinter Cell, obviously. But with a superhero game, I like the ability to feel like a predator. Like when I have 10 enemies and I'm picking them off one by one. So this game, because it paired back the gadgets, like the trip mines and whatnot, you lose that aspect of stealth. But it also gives you a new item, the web line. And you can basically create infinite web lines and it breaks the stealth so bad that even in this gameplay footage, and I'm gonna show it to you, in this one haunt, I can literally create infinite web lines. I can just use the web shooter to distract one enemy and just keep zipping them up. There's literally no challenge to the stealth in this game. And that's one of the reasons why I feel like Insomniac may not have made stealth one of the biggest focuses for the core gameplay. Because in all the side content, it's a very, 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 very important component if you want to avoid battles and kind of feel like Spider-Man. But the stealth is so trivialized that it just honestly is serves better to put me to sleep than actually think and, and feel like that cool spider predator that I want it to be. And I think this is probably the gravest sin in this game. Now, of course, traversal, the wingsuit, obviously it feels fun to use, super cool. I think the whole fun fact of crossing New York even faster than what I originally did in the PS4 is insane. Definitely that aspect has been upgraded. But overall, after beating it, I'll just be honest and say it, I think Spider-Man 2 is a great game, but it's a very, very safe sequel. And I think they're doing a, I, I think this game kind of serves as like a tech demo for Spider-Man 3. I think that Insomniac has finally like really felt comfortable with the PS5. They're starting to do things that are like actually using the raw power of that system. And I feel like Spider-Man 3, because obviously they pretty much set this game up for a trilogy, uh, I think that's where they're really going to show their full cards. But this game, it's fine. It's cool. It's great. I think you'll like it if you buy it. It's a very serviceable title. But ultimately, I think it's an incredibly safe sequel. And it's hard not to think that when you've already been blown away by Spider-Man on the PS4. And this game, while it's nice, doesn't really do a whole heck of a lot to separate itself. And in some ways, I definitely think this game is kind of a step back in terms of its gameplay. Visually, looks great. Uh, I think they definitely fucking ruined the stealth. And uh, the combat, I think with the lack of gadgets and the fact that now they have these ultimate abilities, which you can basically hotkey four abilities onto your character. Uh, they're cool, kind of limited in the beginning, towards the end of the game, and I'm talking like when you're 90% done with it, by the time Peter gets the symbiote suit, because yes, there's Venom, then Miles and Peter kind of change up and their combat is a little bit more interesting. But honestly, before the, the first 90% of the main story, just don't really feel like it's all there. 
That said though, ladies and gentlemen, overall, I would say pretty decent game, very safe sequel, but uh, it is what it is, you know? Is it deserving of 90 plus on Metacritic? I think this game does what it set out to. It's a good Spider-Man game. I just hope when Spider-Man 3 comes out, Insomniac really, really goes balls in, just like they did when they launched the original Spider-Man on the PS4. That said though, ladies and gentlemen, this is me, Mudahar, and uh, yeah, all I gotta say, I am out.